This episode of Taxilla is sponsored by the 2013 Ford Fusion. Time to get our HD Nation on. And speaking of HD, we bet a good chunk of you at home received to purchase yourself some new home theater gear. So what better time to roll out Robert Heron's top tips for new home theater and HD gadgets. Now, especially for larger HD TVs like plasmas in particular, and those home theater in a box kits with dozens of parts, take a picture of the packaging and how it all goes together just in case you have to return it or exchange it. You'll be able to repack all that stuff nice and safe for transport. Right. And if you want, think of it like a mad scientist Tetris game, really. It's, it's, it can be quite convoluted in terms of how to get some of those bigger screens back into one Does it box. Go this way? No, 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 wait. Go Just that in way. case. Oh. It's all the little pieces, the foam parts, which get you. And, uh, or worse, when you get that 125 pound HDTV into the box and find out that the, the, the two corner pieces up here are actually underneath it down here, and you got to call your neighbor back over to get it's it. Terrible. Yeah. Also, for all your new gear, plug it into a power strip. Uh, ideally an isolated power strip. If, if there's a tangle of power cords going into several stacked wall outlet adop adapters, just stop that madness. The power strips like this Belkin, this is an eight outlet pivot surge. The thing I really like about this one in particular is the fact that this, the outlets themselves pivot. For, for if you're dealing with things like wall warts or odd shaped plugs, you can actually swing these around to get them into position so you can fit, you can actually use every plug on it, which is super, super handy. I bought a couple of these and I, I use them everywhere. They provide basic surge protection as well as uh, a line noise filter for phone or data. In addition, it'll provide some basic uh, uh, information about the circuitry within the wiring itself. Also, if you want to step it up, Triplight makes something called a line conditioner. This is another company I recommend their products all the time. This is where if you're dealing with a, say, a situation where you're having lots of brownouts, the, the power is going up and down, you live somewhere where you're always dealing with maybe somebody's kicking on some motor and you always yeah. see your lights flickering or something bad is happening with your electricity, this basically will take that current coming in, reconstitute it into something very clean and stable and send it out. So then if you connect something like your power strip, you can then drive all your gear nice and cleanly. Now, Look, we get a lot of questions like, should I use a power conditioner or X audio company that makes the big fat cables has a $4,000 product that's supposed to make my electricity better. This is good. This is 300 bucks, which is not cheap, but no. 300 bucks is cheap compared to $3,000 worth of audio gear. All this does is takes whatever comes out of the wall plug and turns it into the 120 volts and 60 hertz that you're supposed to get. Now, I mean no insult to anybody who works for a power company, but I've been in situations where I was getting 110 volts and well under 60 hertz out of the wall. It may have been a North Jersey thing. It may have been a problem with the lines. <laughs> it may have been a problem with too many air conditioners running in that corner of the universe. But sometimes what comes out of the wall ain't what you expect and your 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 home theater gear or worse yet, your hard drives doesn't like it. Oh, without at a doubt. 300 bucks reputable Not company. Not bad at all. Now for PC gear, I'd be more inclined to say you could, you could save a little bit of money by going with something right. like an uninterrupted power supply, which will provide similar functionality. But this I think is really ideal for, for if you're dealing with bad power situations. Now ideally, you'd have a, a device like this connected to the home, uh, where, where power coming into the home is first rectified for, and can cleaned up. But if not, there you go. Also, for your inputs and outputs on all this new gear you got, right. if both devices have an HDMI port, always use it. It gives you the best video and audio quality and it eases the setup. And also remember too that if you have DVI and display ports on other devices like your notebook say, those are easily converted to HDMI using only an inexpensive adapter cable. Wireless HDMI is now available and it's a good thing. It's actually working quite well and there are many products out there too. So if you can't go or you don't want to go with a long cable, and this one happens to be from our good folks over at Monoprice, uh, this is an example of one of their new Redmere cables that can go up to about 60 feet if you need it to. But if you don't want to do this and you want to do wireless, that's available now. Great products we've shown off. DVDO Air was one. Now, if your device doesn't have HDMI, go with component video. And I'm looking specifically at the Wii console owners out there. It comes with that, that composite cable, the yellow right. cable. Don't use that one. Spend five bucks on a, compo on a component cable for your Wii and you're gonna get better quality, better, better detail, and better color out of it for that new HDTV. Four, for HDTVs, follow that on-screen setup. Uh, it'll offer a home or a store environment that home preset reduces energy consumption and it improves picture quality. And if somebody's already tinkered with the set and all the settings are all over the place, just go into the menu and reset it and start fresh. Number five, if your gear can automatically connect to the internet and update itself, go ahead and enable that feature, especially <laughs> if you're setting this up for someone else. Uh, this is especially important with Blu-ray players. Auto-update those suckers when possible. They're always putting out new updates to support discs and other features and to fix bugs within the player itself or maybe add some new stuff. 
Also, there's a lot of good free HDTV out there. You can connect a DTV antenna and find out. Uh, Walton is actually on sale right now for 30 bucks plus shipping and handling until the end of the year. I tweeted a coupon code the other day and you can check that out if you want. Also, uh, the Mohu Leaf is another highly recommended indoor antenna that's available as amplified or not. And these are great options for getting free TV. And finally, wall mount that TV if at all possible. It helps protect that investment and it gives you more space and it can get rid of an ugly stand if it came with one. I got one more tip. Do it. If you paid 125 bucks for an HDMI cable, I hope you saved a receipt. <laughs> Go to yeah. monoprice.com, order a $6 HDMI cable, oh. trust us on this one, and take that $125 oh. cable back and get like five Blu-rays. Right, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Save I'm some just money. saying. You don't even, I wouldn't even re-gift that one. Yeah, just get the money back and move on. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Ford and the 2013 Fusion are back to sponsor Techzilla today. The new Fusion is packed with all kinds of technology, including sync. Ford's going to be back at CES making some big announcements and sponsoring Revision Z's coverage of CES once again in 2013. If you're going to be out in Vegas, make sure to check out Ford's booth in the North Hall where they'll be announcing new technology partnerships and integrations while continuing Ford's passion to go further. And no worries if you can't make it out to Sin City, up to the minute coverage will be available all week long at revision3.com slash CES. Thanks again to Ford and the new Fusion for powering today's episode of Techzilla.